But strangely enough, I've been very fortunate, you know, after many years of competitive fishing, etc., and having mates all over the country to, um, I've fished most of the spots in South Africa, had most of the experiences that the ease, uh, caught most of the species they used to catch. Um, so I've been very, very, very privileged and um, lucky in that regard. But um, one thing that's quite weird actually is that I've never experienced the sardine run. Um, me and my wife lived overseas for a couple of years and I can remember two occasions where I booked a flight back to South Africa this time of the year for a week or 10 days or whatever and not a sardine to be seen uh, for the entire holiday. So I tried it twice, it didn't work out for me. Um, and it always seems like I'll wait for, for the action to come or an invite or, or whatever, but there's always something that, that happens and I just can't make it or I miss it or the timing was out. So when I got the invite for, for this trip to experience a bit of the sardine run, um, I actually um, had my doubts whether it'll happen. Um, I thought it was a bit of a Jonah when it comes to the sardine run and I might spoil it for everybody else, but um, I gave it a go. The main plan this trip was to experience a bit of the big shark fishing. Um, I mean, you really catch some outsized sharks if you eat it right um, this time of the year. So that was something that I was looking forward to, to test myself against one of those monsters during the sardine run. Um, but you, you also get a few game fish species. Obviously, there's a hell of a big um, food, food source out here for them. So um, everything comes in to feed on the shoals and often the shoals are just behind the, the back breaker, sometimes in the trough. Seems like a, the Natal snook or the, I think of the queen mackerel as it's, as it's known. It's a bit of a cult fish here in Natal. There's boys that hunt it day after day, make a hundred cast every day fishing for it, fishing for that specific species. It's quite technical. Um, the first thing, that the, the snook is really a deep sea species. It's a, it's not, a, it's not a, a fish that really gets caught in side gutters or on sandbanks or whatever. They like swimming in the deep blue. So you generally need to target them off um, deep water points. Generally your bite comes within the first 10 or 20 wines. So um, the guy that casts the furthest usually gets the first or the most bites. So um, tackle wise I would suggest to get yourself a good quality braid. Um, Diameter is very important and it needs to be nice and subtle because, like I said, you need the distance. So, 20 pound braid would be the maximum. If you use good quality braid, you can go down to 15 pound either and just fish with a, a light leader, etc. The guys are looking for a small little rip. Actually, that the, the rip could maybe um, disorientate the bait fish a little bit. I'm not 100% sure what the reason is behind that, but uh, a rip is actually quite important, or just a hint of a rip. Um, uh, casting in a very specific spot, so the guys that got the angle of the cast right and the retrieve at the right angle, just over the corner of the rip, got the most bites. So um, that's a that's a tip that I picked up fairly soon in the exercise. It's a species that I've never fished before, so you know something along that lines would have been great to um, just tick the box. ended up getting a bite or two um, of which I duffed unfortunately I think I, I on off my first um, three fish if I'm not mistaken and I wasn't sure what I was doing wrong but um, I got told in no uncertain terms that I'm pulling the fish too too softly um, apparently they shake a bit um, if you don't keep the pressure they they throw the hooks like there's no tomorrow it's the game that so um, I think I was playing them a little bit softly um, I was sort of worried because uh, the braid is quite light it's 15 pound braid so you don't want to force it too much but um, I got told that you need to pull the drag a set don't touch the drag just pull as hard as you can and keep on pulling and don't stop and um, and yeah luckily I came good in the end to my relief.
area we fished was, was quite fell and the line of the rip was casting over the edge of a reef, um, a big pinnacle that you couldn't get to, there was a deep gully behind it. So um, that made it a little bit tricky, especially if the fish decides to go left when you hook it, like um, would be my luck. So when it took off, it went totally in the wrong direction. So I didn't give it much hope. There was a split decision to make a choice, either run up, give it slack and hope it turns or it goes over the rock, or just stand your ground and hit and hold. Fortunately or not, I don't know, in the end it worked out, I just decided to, to clamp on and uh, the fish made a U-turn and went the other way. So then I was in with a chance, I realised. My mate Greg Sutherland was there to, to give that advice and um, it was quite a tough taskmaster but it all's well that ends well. Um, he jumped down, he grabbed the fish me and um, yeah, I was quite happy to see that it was um, quite a long fish. I believe the sort of benchmark for these fish, if you get one over a meter it's quite special so um, uh, I think it was actually a bit of beginner's luck. And, quite unfair that it had to be the biggest one of the day in a good size like that, but hey, uh, it's just the way it goes. Yeah, we decided to chase a few snook here. Greg Sutherland put us on the, on the fish. Uh, we had a bit of bad luck this morning with a few on-offs, but I got coached into this one properly. So it's my first snook, and I believe it uh, for the species is our proper one, so I'm very happy. Yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful fish and um, I was lucky that it was a, a good sized one. Um, I know a lot of guys that have fished their whole lives for, for, for snook and um, never got one over at the, the, the meter. So um, yeah, I'm very privileged and lucky to, to, to get one that size. What's the measurement there? 102. One meter, two centimeters. Proper fish, Goosey. Well done. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Yeah, if, I'm, if I'm ever down in this neck of the woods again, I will definitely try and target um, that species again, catch a few more of them and maybe put all the tricks that I got taught by Greg and the boys to uh, good use and maybe catch one or two more.